Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review on the Huss Productions. In today's review I'm going to be taking a look at one of the latest B&M exclusive Doctor Who action figure collector sets from the History of the Daleks series. In today's review the rather unusually titled History of the Daleks set 16 and 17 featuring Dalek Zack alongside the Metaltron Dalek from Doctor Who series 1. So before we crack these Daleks out of the box, let's take a look at the packaging. This is of course the second wave to feature the new blue 60th anniversary star guide and it looks lovely, although a few changes have been made. The most notable change is the fact that the entirety of the box is now made out of corrugated cardboard, meaning it is much more secure. Not only does this protect the figures, it also protects the packaging for those of you that like to display your figures in the box. As I've seen so many within the previous wave that had rips here and around here because the cardboard was simply too weak. It was still a little bit of a blessing in disguise because it meant all those slippery scalpers cramming as many of these sets as possible into the back of their car was simultaneously damaging them before listing them for extensive prices on eBay. See you now, every cloud and all that. At the very bottom of the box we have the title of the set which is History of the Daleks 16 and 17. I've completely gave up on the numbering by this point to be quite honest. Just above this we have the limited edition sticker and off to the opposite side we have the new series TARDIS graphic. We have a triangular box out presenting the Diamond Design 60th anniversary logo. The set features a Time War Survivor Dalek, we've all felt like a Time War Survivor Dalek at some point in our lives, and then the second Dalek within the set is a Black Dalek, also known as Dalek Sack. On the bottom of the box it does also state usually what era the figure set is from. Although I do find it quite funny that on this most recent set they've just completely gave up on that. Very subtle different shades of blue being used to indicate different incarnations of the Doctor, with the exception of the Sixth Doctor, which for some reason his packaging is yellow, so I love the fact that he stands out so much. The side of the box continues this lovely smart design. The vast majority of the company information is limited to the very bottom of the box. And towards the top we have the lovely other variation of the 60th anniversary Doctor Who logo really standing out on that white background. And as for the back of the box, again, a really lovely colour scheme. It not only introduces the new series Dalek props to the history of the Daleks range, but also provides a story synopsis for both Dalek from 2005 and Army of Ghosts from 2006. And as regular viewers already know, if you've seen my previous reviews within this series, I hate the new packaging when it comes to the singular plastic tray, of course housing both of the Daleks. It means that once this set is open, it cannot be put back in the box again. This does make it rather difficult to spot quality control issues, especially when looking at these Daleks in store. This has all been done, of course, to reduce plastic wastage, in turn making this packaging better for the environment. Sliding the display tray from out of the box does, of course, reveal a closer look at that blue vortex. It really makes the Daleks stand out and looks really cool. Although if we think back to a few waves previous, of course the background was once used to have a unique display from that specific Doctor Who serial, which made each set unique and exciting and great for collectors, and sadly again that is something that is now no longer present. So let's start off this review by taking a look at Dalek Sec. Funnily enough, something which applies to this set, but also the History of the Daleks set 15, is the reaction to these sets when they were initially announced really, really surprised me, because there was quite a lot of negative comments. It surprised me because this Supreme Dalek from Remembrance of the Daleks is one of the rarest Daleks to ever appear within the character options classic action figure line, so seeing it released again is surely a good opportunity. You could argue that this variation of Dalek Sec is even rarer because it's never properly been released in the UK, originally a part of an American exclusive version of the Doomsday set, and then it was released single cardedly, again not particularly on general sale, it wasn't that common. Meaning, for the vast majority of UK Doctor Who fans, unless you got it shipped from overseas, the other Dalek Sec that you have in your collection is this rather chunky thing, or one of the variations of this figure. So this, obviously, is a vast improvement. Sporting a chunky skirt section, an enlarged fender, a ridiculously large egg whisk, giant slats, ridiculously long eye stalk, and I've got no idea what this is even trying to be. Personally, I'm rather glad to see the back of this figure and have a proper Dalek sack to go at the front of the shelf. This 2023 version absolutely does the prop justice, sporting lots of lovely paint application, that divide between matte and glossy, it looks excellent. Although, regardless of the compliments, there is nothing changing the fact that this is a sculpt that we have seen many, many times before. 
rather inconveniently, we don't really start off with a high point, and something of which that the original chunky version, even though I've just been bullying it, actually does a lot better. The fender has been sculpted in a matte black plastic, whilst due to it being a new series design, it is much more angular and chunky, split up into various different panels, with the accompaniment of various rivets set running along the top. Said rivets haven't been painted, unlike the original version from 2006, which is really, really frustrating, I can't lie. It's even more frustrating because the other Dalek within this set does have that paint application. It's no exaggeration when I say this is the biggest downfall of this figure. It's such a shame this hasn't been included, because other than this and a few minor paint application issues, it is the thing that holds this figure back from being utterly superb. Flipping the Dalek upwards, of course you are greeted by your usual company stuff, along with the two back wheels and the front rotating wheel, allowing Dalek Sec to move around wherever you want him to go. The matte black design does continue onto the skirt of Dalek Sec, although we also have the introduction of the glossy black paint application as well. Glossy black is of course present on each and every hemisphere and it looks lovely. It really makes them stand out, it emphasises the sculpt. But my favourite thing of all with the glossy black is the way that the light bounces off all of the glossy sections on Dalek Sack. I think it makes him look really cool, but also like he means business. Due to the colour scheme on this Dalek, however, it does make some things prominent which ideally shouldn't, such as the moulding line there running up the front of the Dalek, which is also present on the back as well, also in between a few of the hemispheres too. But by far one of the biggest paint application problems with Dalek Sec is the way that the paint leak comes over from the midsection onto the mat. Due to the way that the packaging now has that singular tray, it makes little paint details like this really difficult to spot and avoid. So it's even worse as you can see around that section there and kind of runs across the entirety of this bottom piece. Again, it's little quality hiccups like this that I'm starting to see reoccur more and more within the line these days, which is getting a little bit worrying. The glossy finish on Sec really does shine on the midsection. I love how this looks, especially with the emphasis on the screws there with the silver highlight. Understandably, any paint leak on this section will stand out an absolute mile, so again, I recommend going into store and handpicking your Dalek set to avoid any disappointment. Even the little highlights there around the weaponry box also given a silver dot of paint. I'm also rather relieved that the ball joints on Dalek sec are glossy black in keeping with the rest of the Dalek, and they've not done something weird like they have with the bronze one because it would have stood out massively. The manipulator arm is brilliant and such a vast improvement on the original release. It is now much longer, much thinner, and much more in proportion to the rest of the Dalek. Tinted in silver, it is a lovely contrast to the rest of that glossy black Dalek body. Just before the plunger, we even have a few rivets, which is a lovely sculpting touch. The plunger itself has some nice sculpting details, which can also be seen on the inside of the plunger as well. As for the gun, once again, this has been streamlined. It is much thinner than the original release, and therefore much more in proportion to the rest of the Dalek body, thankfully. This has been given a lovely silvery finish, looking very shiny indeed, and there isn't really too much to say, to be honest, about the midsection on Dalek Sec. It of course follows exactly the same sculpt to usual, the entirety of it has been sculpted in a black plastic, although this time we have returned to the matte design. I am incredibly relieved that this figure does sport both the matte and glossy sections, because for a while, when we've seen the promotional material for this set, that was possibly not the case. It may seem really small, but having a fully glossy Dalek sec doesn't quite have the same appearance. It doesn't look as effective. Thankfully, the toy continues to represent those differing finishes authentically. The glossy finish once again returns on Dalek Sex Dome, exactly the same sculpt as always with the various different panels. Due to the gloss, the light really bounces off this, which I think looks really cool. And of course, the Eye Stalker box also features a little screws there around the side. The dome lights continue to use that more detailed, smaller sculpt, complete with the ridging on the main lantern itself, surrounded by this silver highlight to represent the frame. You know exactly really what to expect from the eye stalk. The vast majority of the stalk itself has been sculpted in a clear plastic with a silver highlight applied over the top, and the individual discs do of course have a transparent finish. There are various decorations around the side of the main eye socket section. This is of course all complemented with that light blue pupil. 
Let's face it, even that iconic feature was absent from the remote control version of Dalek Sec from back in the day. Sec's ID badge is housed underneath the iStalk box, of course due to the black base colour this really does stand out a lot more compared to your usual Daleks. I must be a fake fan because I don't catalogue the various different Dalek ID badges, although due to the fact that Sex stands out quite a lot I'm pretty confident in saying it's accurate to what's seen on screen. So now we move on to the second Dalek of the set, it is of course the Metaltron from the infamous Rob Sherman story from Doctor Who series 1, entitled Dalek, and it has to be said, when this set was initially announced, I wasn't best pleased with this Dalek, I thought the colour scheme was all over the place, now that I have this Dalek in hand, I must admit, I really, really like it. Don't get me wrong, there is still some rather questionable colour choices with this Dalek, which make it look a little bit unusual compared to others, but I still think it looks nice, in particular on camera. But regardless of the unusual colours, a Dalek is a Dalek, meaning it retains quite a lot of detail that we've already taken a look at, and we are already very familiar with by this point gun is exactly the same sculpt and has a silver finish as per usual. The manipulator arm is the streamlined longer and thinner design of the sucker itself also sporting the same panelled detailing. The eye stalk is silver with the clear disc sections finished off nicely with the blue pupil. The dome lights are clear with the usual silver casing and of course the dome itself is split into various different panels. This also continues onto the back of the Dalek, but we also have this nice and dirtied wash there applied over the top, which emphasises some of those details a little bit further, which is a great touch. And it was all going so well, and then the housing of the eye stock came along. I don't quite know why they've slipped up on this, because they never normally do. But as you can see, we have the ridge section there, which does of course keep the eye stock nicely articulated. But for some reason, they've painted this a bronze to coincide with the rest of the Dalek body, as opposed to the usual black. No idea why they've done this. It's a very unusual choice. The little Dalek ID badge has been nicely printed on though, however, so that is a plus. The neck bin of the Dalek is exactly the same to usual. Of course, it features this new bronze, which I will be talking about in a moment, of course, on the disc set, as well as the struts running up the middle. And then we have the black there underneath with a various lovely textured mesh. Something that I definitely recommend doing is if you get this Dalek in store, then check this section to ensure that you don't have bronze paint bleed onto the black, because it does, in fact, stand out quite a lot. My, My Dalek's pretty decent paint application wise, although it's probably the fifth or sixth one that I picked up to look at, definitely check the Daleks over before committing to purchasing them. Right then, let's take a look at the main point of debate with this Dalek, and that is the bronze shade that has been used. On the initial photos, I thought that this was way too bright. Now that I've got it in hand, I still think it's rather bright, although not as bad as I initially thought. Of course, this is the Metaltron from Series 1, and there is that moment where he sticks his plunger into the wall and then like, eats the entirety of the internet or something. And in that moment, as well as multiple moments throughout the story, the golden bronze shade does look rather dazzling. Perhaps that's further exaggerated by the fact that the Van Staten Museum within the story is very dark and dingy, so all those bright colours do look even more vibrant than they actually are. Plus, I'd also add to that that the vast majority of the new series sculpt bronze Daleks that we've seen released in recent years have all been Time War Daleks, and have had to some degree a little bit of wear and tear, making them look like they've seen better days. But even then, I think it will be fair to say that maybe this Dalek is a shade of bronze too bright, maybe it needs to be taken down a notch or two, but even then, I kind of like that. It reminds me of the days of the early Russell T Davies era, where everything did not seem to be a little bit oversaturated. Also, feels like we've gone a little bit full circle as once more we've returned to the Metaltron in a rather unusual shade of bronze, although admittedly this one is still a lot better. Turning to those details now with the midsection, of course the revamped sculpt really nicely emphasises the various different slats running around the Dalek. New bronze is once again used as the base colour, then each individual slat has been given a lovely golden finish. Much like on Dalek Sec, I love how each rivet has been given a silver paint application. There is also a very subtle darkened wash which gets into the crevices there of the various different panels. You can kind of see it around the gun boxes. And to be honest, I think this wash, if it was just ever so slightly darker, I think the colouring or the shade of bronze would be a little bit less controversial and prominent. Of course, it is excellent attention to detail that even the individual screws running around the gun box have also been painted as silver. Which, however, something that is less lovely, and again, a very, very similar problem to the eye stock, that the ball joint is also a bronze and not a black, unlike basically all of the previous bronze Dalek releases. I've got no idea why they've done this, and I think it's one of those things that once you've seen it, you can't unsee it, which is really frustrating. 
And finally, for the midsection, of course, one of the big things or the big differences with this bronze Dalek compared to others is the fact that we have this bronze section there dividing the midsection from the skirt, not really seen on any other bronze Dalek. So I've got a sneaking suspicion, get ready for the next wave, where we'll probably have a Dalek that looks a bit like this. Especially given the reception of this wave, I can't really figure out in my head if this set of two bronze Daleks with slightly different paint application would be a big seller or a shelf warmer. Who knows? Maybe even stay tuned to find out. The skirt of the bronze Dalek is really where we see that new bronze finish, I think, in action. And you know what? I think it does still continue to work quite well. Both the skirt base itself, as well as the hemispheres, have this lovely, glossy, shiny finish, giving the appearance that the entire piece is made out of a metal, or I suppose Dalekanium. Due to the lighter base colour, it's also nice to see that those sculpting lines aren't as visible as the likes of Dalek Sec. What I can see, the paint application really neatly keeps within the lines. Of course, those bronze hemispheres also have the sculpting there, that base towards the bottom, which nicely collects a little bit of that dirtied wash, again emphasising them even further. One thing which is a little bit more prominent towards the back, we even have this dirtied kind of shadowy section there underneath each hemisphere to kind of make it look like soot and grime has gathered around the Dalek armour. You know what, the more time that I spend reviewing this Dalek, the more I'm becoming to love it. I think the paint application, yes, is exaggerated, but it kind of compensates for the fact that this is an action figure. If this technique is continued to be used moving forward, I'll be very interested to see what the other new series Daleks look like. The Journey's End Supreme Dalek in particular would be quite interesting. And finally, we conclude this look at the Metal Tron Dalek with that fender. Exactly the same sculpt to usual, although it's received a rather unusual finish. I've kind of gone with this rather odd metally finish with that silver shine there, and of course the individual screws nicely painted with a silver highlight and a darkened wash applied over the top. In some lights, I think this really works. In other lights, I think it really doesn't. It's a rather unusual situation where, because the bronze is rather odd as it is, I think that this silver also looks somewhat fine, because they kind of contrast with each other in their oddness. If this fender was attached to a normal coloured bronze Dalek, I think it would look very, very odd indeed. Especially when you turn the Dalek upside down and it reveals an incredibly shiny silver base, it just feels completely wrong. So there we have it, that is my review of the rather unusually titled History of the Daleks 16 and 17. And you know what, the more that I've reviewed this set and spent time with it, the more that I've really came to love it. I think that Dalek Sec is a perfect representation of the character as seen within the story. I love the paint application and the varying shades of matte and glossy, I think it works really well. And it's lovely to have a general release of Dalek Sec sporting the much better, thinner sculpt. It's just a shame about those quality control issues which really do let the figure down, and in particular of course the lack of of silver highlight on those nuts and bolts on the fender. Likewise, for the Bronze Dalek, I really didn't expect to like it at all. I thought it would be too bright, too over-exaggerated, but I think it really works. I think that the silver on the fender, yes, is a little bit much, but I love that darkened wash applied over the top, but I think that that in turn really complements the rest of the figure, and because the base is a glossy silver, it works that the rest of the Dalek is glossy as well. It looks new, it looks dazzling, it looks, I think it nicely represents that more saturated look of the early Russell T Davies era stories. And to be honest, for £20, I think that this is a really good set, a great opportunity to get essentially the best version of Bronze Dalek Sculpt, having had that bulky design for many, many years. Overall, this set, I really, really like it, and to be honest, I highly recommend it, especially if you're a fan of the Russell T Davies first era. So thank you very much for watching this review, I really hope you have enjoyed it, do of course stay tuned on the host productions for regular Doctor Who reviews, and of course on that note, have a nice day, and I shall of course see you all next time.